The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for liturgical celebration of the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. There are four announcements. The parish is sponsoring a strip ticket called the 500 Club. Call the parish office and tell Mike that you want to be a member of the 500 Club or there is a sign up sheet on the table in the gathering space. Also those who are members of the 500 Club should pick up their strip tickets after Mass today for the month of July. The tickets are in a box on the table in the gathering space. Our parish will offer children ages 4 through 5th grade a one-day retreat on Wednesday, August 3rd. Watch the bulletin for more details. That's Children's Retreat Day, August 3rd. Mark your calendar for August 7th for our parish picnic and outdoor mass at the BY Park on Route 130. More information is in the bulletin. Sign-ups are on the table in the gathering space. Remember, parish picnic, BY Park, August 7th, register today. This is Food Bank Weekend. Please place your non-perishable items at the entrances of the church. Monetary donations are also accepted. Good morning, everyone. And a happy 4th of July to everybody. Very good. I'm over here. Come on, Nate. Bring the camera here so that the people can see who does this. A little bit lower. There, now we've got you on a camera, too. Super. Remember that, Karen, when you're editing, keep his picture in there. Uh, visitors, we welcome. Let's uh, all take a moment to stand and welcome each other in the peace of Christ. And now let's open our hymnals to 879. Come Christians, join to sing. 879, please. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Let's pause at this time reflecting upon our lives and asking the Lord for his mercy and compassion for those times that we have failed through human weakness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. Our May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Thank you. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those whom you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. And we ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. All the earth cry out with joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out with joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out with joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry Sing of his glory. 
His love is eternal. Let all the earth cry out with joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out with joy to the Lord. Hearken to me as I sing my love of the Lord. He answers the prayers of my heart. He leads me in safety from death unto life. Let all the earth cry out with joy to the To the Lord, to the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he had sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place that he intended to visit. And Jesus said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it 
and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. For me, summertime brings back memories of vacations with the family as a kid, and while we didn't take many vacations because of Dad's work schedule, the ones we did take always had a familiar chant that rang through each and every time. Are we there yet? I think any one of you can relate with that. And the answer was almost always, almost. We are talking with Florence last night, she said her parents would always say, about another hundred miles yeah, until they finally got there. And as we travel, we know there's the rest areas and the other stops and everything, parks, comfort stations, but inevitably those are only temporary. What we are looking for is the final destination, our final point of uh, uh, where we want to be. And that is so true with our spiritual life as well because we know what God has planned for us. We work towards that, but inevitably we get sidetracked from time to time and we have to pull ourselves back on track and realize what it is that God has to offer. In our selections, scripture selections for this weekend, Israel has had a long journey from prosperity to infidelity and back to fidelity and back to infidelity. And the temple has been rebuilt and the people of Israel had been longing for consolation and looking to that point when they would be able to return to their holy homeland. And uh, in their history, we know from reading the various times that they became exiles uh, through the Babylonian conquerings. And while under Babylon's control, many times they fell prey to worshiping the false gods, the pagan gods. But eventually, through different prophets, they would be able to get themselves back on track. And so today's first reading is from the end of the prophecies. And what we are seeing here is almost a picture of a mother who is trying to nurse or comfort her whimpering child. Jerusalem as the city of God is the destination for God's people. And like a loving mother, God has been waiting to embrace all those who have been faithful uh, to his uh, way of life, to his law of love. Acceptance, welcome, nourishment, and a sense of being back home are promised, and all will experience the great joy that God has for them. In the gospel, we hear Jesus sending the 72 out, saying, go on your way. And as you go, he has some specific directions which sound weird, if I can put it that way. Take no money, no wallet, no belt, no extra shoes or sandals, no extra clothing. Just get out there and proclaim the kingdom. No cell phone, no credit cards or debit cards, no GPS. Why is he doing that? A couple of reasons. One, it takes time to pack. And he wants the message to get out there as quickly as possible. The message is urgent to get moving. But the second reason, and this is also for you and me, we must learn how to put our trust in the Father. You see, if Jesus would allow these 72 to take their wallets with their credit cards and their cell phones so that they could get a GPS uh, location wherever they're at and any of the other things, if a town didn't welcome them, yeah, I'll go to Sheets, I'll go to Kogo's, I'll pick up a sandwich and uh, a soda or pop. I'll be okay for the night. That ain't what he wanted. He did not want them to depend on themselves. He wanted them to learn how to depend on God, how to trust in Him. And that is what He is asking of you and me as well. Too many times we have allowed ourselves to think we are in control of everything. And we forget God is in control of everything. And when we give Him our allegiance, 
He's there helping us through. But when we fall back and forget that he's around, we're like the Israelites in the first reading, wandering around aimlessly, worshiping the false gods, whether it is the god of the phone or the god of the credit and debit cards or whatever it might be. And he is trying to call us back. They eventually do get back after trusting in Jesus' message. And he welcomes them, and they're so excited about all the things they were able to accomplish. And he cautions them and says, hold on a minute. Don't pat yourselves on a shoulder too much. The only reason you were able to accomplish all of that is because my father had accompanied you, and he helped you with those graces. And that's the same thing for you and me. Any of our achievements are only because of God. And we need to remember, God deserves all the credit that we accomplish. Even waking up this morning, it's not because the alarm clock woke us up. Oh, it is. But it's because God was there. And he put the breath of his life back in our lungs for another day so that we could work with him and share his love with one another. Most of us don't think of ourselves as missionaries. Most of us are not called in that special way to go out and preach, much less cast out evil spirits. We're just happy enough to be able to keep our own lives in control. And if we believe that, we are mistaken. Jesus Christ did not create us. Jesus Christ did not call us into baptism solely for the purpose of coming to church once in a while or once a week, and then that's it. Jesus Christ called you and me into his baptism to partake in the mission, participate in the mission of the 72 as well as the 12 apostles, meaning we are to work with the Lord 24-7, 365. Every moment of our life, we are to in some way positively affect or influence other people. We are to bring blessings of peace everywhere we go. We are to share the table with everyone who offers. We are to bring comfort and healing to those who are in need, encouragement and forgiveness and so, and so on. The world is hungry for the truth, the truth that God came to give each and every one of us. And unfortunately, there are too many false prophets out there who are filling our minds or distracting our minds from the real truth and trying to get us to believe other ways and other philosophies. Jesus wants us to realize there is only one way to heaven. It is through him and through his teachings and the Father. And so together, uh, we are all called to work in this missionary work of sharing the gospel message uh, of God's love and care for all of us. This weekend, as our nation celebrates another birthday, many of us will be celebrating with picnics, going to parades or the various concerts in the area, looking forward to the fireworks displays. And all of this is nice as we do celebrate our birthday. But we cannot forget what it is that we are celebrating. The birthday of these United States did not come about without its growing pains, without its bloodshed, without its anxieties. To leave the old country and cross the ocean to an unknown took courage, a courage that was fueled by the desire for a better life. And while we've experienced that better life, we've sometimes forgotten that that better life is only because of our loving God blessing us and blessing our nation with prosperity. We've sometimes experienced that better life at the expense of Mother Nature as well as at the expense of other people. Are we there yet? We're still on a journey just like our vacations. We still have much to overcome if we are going to be a land with liberty and justice for all. And that is what you and I have to work for, not only as Catholics, not only as Christians, but also as American citizens. Liberty and justice for all. Not for just this group of people or this select group, but for everybody. 
General Robert E. Lee invaded Pennsylvania in June of 1863. A distinguished citizen of Philadelphia wired Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant's chief of staff, General Henry Halleck, to offer his services as a commanding officer to help repel uh, Lee's invasion. Halleck's return wire was rather short and to the point. He said, we have five times as many generals as we know what to do with, but we are greatly in need of privates. Anyone volunteering as a private will be thankfully received. And so whether it is for our nation or for our God, we have more chiefs than Indians many times. Jesus is looking for Indians or privates or individuals. He says the harvest is abundant and the laborers are few. Why is that? because we choose to sit back, we've become complacent, we've become too comfortable, and we've become, let somebody else do it. Jesus is calling each and every one of us, and he wants people who are willing to get a little bit dirty to help him with the work of spreading the message. 2,000 years ago, he sent out 72 years ago, they sent, uh, let me try that again. 2,000 years ago, he sent out 72 individuals, and they had great success. Today, he is sending you and me, and he asked us to work for the cause of a better life for all people. We are the ones who, like the 72, must offer the invitation to follow Christ and to extend the message of hope and love and forgiveness and peace. It takes courage. And it may be a little scary and daunting, but then he wouldn't have asked us if he didn't think we were capable of doing it. Stephanie has a poster, I think, at both entrances. I believe she also has something in the bulletins about an inquiry night for RCIA coming up on Monday, July the 18th. Is there someone you know who may have expressed an interest in the Catholic faith? someone who maybe who's been baptized but never confirmed. We must be the ones whom Jesus is sending to the front lines to continue the work he began. And so today, once again, we hear that message of discipleship. By virtue of our baptism, all of us are called to help with the harvest for the Lord Jesus. This weekend, as we celebrate our nation's birthday, I pray for all of us, pray for those who are traveling for their safety, and I pray for all of us who celebrate at home or with neighbors that we celebrate responsibly uh, because I want to see you all here next weekend. Have a happy uh, Fourth of July, and always remember to pray for this land. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, may they be blessed with the grace to continue preaching the gospel with courage and zeal to all the nations of the world. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may their decisions reflect the wisdom needed for peace and understanding in all conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from lack of food, shelter, or health care, may they remember how Christ will judge us by the way we treat those less fortunate than ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the United States of America, may God bless, guide, and protect our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For D. Lutz and Rose Giovanni Jevedon, who were buried last week, and for all the faithful departed, may they be with God and all the angels and saints forever in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, and during this Mass we remember in a particular way Bob Kelly and Kristen Wells. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those traveling during this holiday weekend and during the summer months, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for, the, for those whom the Lord may be calling to serve, not only as a priest, brother, or sister, or deacon, or religious, but in any aspect of our lives, that we be willing to answer him with a uh, spirit of generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we thank you for the love that you share with us each and every day, and we ask now that you hear and answer our prayers in your infinite wisdom. We also pray, Lord, that following your example and following the example of the 72, we always be willing to cooperate with you in assisting you in the building of a better world where all people will be treated fairly. We make this prayer in your holy name and united with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 